In the early 1900s, there was a man by the name of Richard Halliburton, whose whole being was dedicated to experiencing the adventure in life. Then, he would write stories, inspiring others to do the same. Richard Halliburton wrote several stories in this very house, the home of his parents, Wesley and Nell Halliburton, the place where he knew he could be alone with his thoughts. When it comes to the brave, audacious spirit of adventure, Halliburton believed there was not much distinction between the world outside and one's own private inner world. He thoroughly believed that by embracing the challenges in life, by chasing one's own horizon, it would lead life's journey on the road less traveled. But what is it that moves a person to want to live a life chasing the horizon, a life that entices and encourages one to consistently push the envelope, to nurture the mysterious call of the heart, and then wholeheartedly to live the dream that passion shapes? In the 1920s and 30s, heralded by the New York Times, Richard's books and articles made the name Halliburton a legend across every continent. Even as a boy, Halliburton made a conscious decision to embrace adventure, leaping unreservedly into the experience of geography, history, and culture, and to live it as though it were the essential element missing in his life, as indeed it was. Richard was one of only a handful of boys that attended the Mary G. Hutchison School in Memphis, a girls' school, where his mother Nell was a teacher. His geography book was his most prized possession. Richard loved geography because it carried him away to all kinds of strange and romantic lands. He read about the Egyptian pyramids, India's marble towers, about the great cathedrals of France and the ruins of ancient Babylon. Stories like these always set him to dreaming, to longing for the actual sight, sounds, smell, and feel of those great world wonders. Richard continued to feed his insatiable appetite for adventure while attending Memphis University School and Princeton University. Having just graduated from Princeton in the summer of 1921, his love of geography seemed to burst headlong into the world, and Richard's passion for adventure now consumed his every moment. Nothing stood in his way as he chased the horizon. Richard wanted to share his enthusiasm for life in the books and articles he wrote. In the introduction of his book, Richard Halliburton's Complete Book of Marvels, he extended this invitation to his readers. Sometimes I pretended I had a magic carpet, and without bothering about tickets and money and farewells, I'd skyrocket away to New York or to Rome, to the Grand Canyon or to China, across deserts and oceans and mountains, then suddenly come back home when the school bell rang for recess. If I ever grow up and have children, we're going traveling together. I'll show them Gibraltar and Jerusalem, the Andes and the Alps, because I'll want my children not only to study geography, I'd like for them to live it too. Well, I'm grown up now. But as yet, I haven't any son or daughter to go traveling with me. And so, in their places, may I take you, your friend, Richard Halliburton. Halliburton never abandoned his childhood dream to seek adventure. That's what gave soul to his life, delight to his heart. For many of us today, we seem to have abandoned our childhood dreams and at the cost of living a life with little passion, excitement, or adventure. In our documentary series, Chase the Horizon, we're going to accompany Tim Bailey, a man living today whose life has similarly been inspired by the spirit of adventure. Chasing the Horizon will most certainly expose us to the inspiration that fueled Halliburton's childhood dreams. Throughout this series, as an added gift from Richard Halliburton's life, we will be continually invited and encouraged to rekindle the dreams of our youth. Tim Bailey, our 21st century companion and guide, has several things in common with Richard Halliburton. Both men sought adventure as a child and treasured that spirit throughout adulthood. For example, 
Richard Halliburton chose to face the challenges of climbing Mount Fuji in the dead of winter. When Tim Bailey was a teenager, he and a friend wandered away from a family picnic and climbed Mount Rainier to a 10,000 foot elevation in tennis shoes. A year or so later, Tim climbed his first glaciated mountain, Mount Shasta, with his little brother and his high school friend. Tim's friend came down with altitude sickness and turned back along with Tim's little brother. Learning to create viable options and deepening the trust he had in himself, Tim continued on and summited Mount Shasta alone. From the past, we have Richard Halliburton. From the present, Tim Bailey. Through the journeys of these two men, we have the extraordinary opportunity to reach back in time and revitalize ourselves through the renewing spirit of adventure. Both men are inviting us to go beyond ourselves as we travel through the mysterious adventure of life's unfolding. Whether the adventure is in the world outside or the adventure is in one's own inner world, they are enticing us to experience the true spirit of adventure and encouraging us to move ahead, actually take the road less traveled. Their lives have the potential to allure and guide us on life's journey, to push the envelope, to nurture the call in our hearts and to live the passion that dreams are made of. The final program in our series, Chase the Horizon, will be to complete the last of Richard Halliburton's audacious lifetime adventures. In March of 1939, Halliburton disappeared at sea while attempting to sail a Chinese junk, the Sea Dragon, from Hong Kong to San Francisco for the opening of the International World Exposition Tim Bailey will complete Halliburton's final journey and bring him home at last as he sails gratefully into the San Francisco Bay Harbor aboard Sea Dragon 2. In Halliburton's book, The Glorious Adventure, where Richard's adventures follow the footsteps of Ulysses, Richard quotes from Tennyson's poem, Ulysses. Come, my friends, Tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows, for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset till I die, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Reflecting on that poem to Ulysses, Halliburton writes, this clear call to leave behind the outworn, too familiar life and seek a newer world found a responsive chord in my own restlessness. I thought to myself, of all the great figures in history, did not this royal vagabond who spent his days in finding the extraordinary, in meeting new experience, in knowing every thrill and beauty and danger the world could offer, did he not have the fullest, the richest, the most enviable life of any man who ever lived. Richard Halliburton is inviting us to experience life to the fullest. Come, my friends, let us seek that newer world and chase the horizon together.